All right, uh, fellow Indycrats, Tulsi Crats, uh, Green Party folks, Libertarians, uh, whoever you are out there, uh, yes, welcome. My name is Dave, and I am the Radical Independent. Tulsi Gabbard, on this forum on WMUR in New Hampshire. Tulsi hitting the ground hard in New Hampshire after her weekend fundraising boon. Can't wait to see what those numbers look like after the uh, Hillary Clinton tweet, uh, which, by the way, continues to get demonetized here on uh, YouTube. You can't really speak uh, negatively uh, about the former first lady and her um, policy with regards to everyone being uh, a Russian asset. Uh, what I like about this conversation is the host is basically trying to ask Tulsi, so what do you do in the midst of all of this turmoil? How do you cut through it? And, you know, we get, um, I believe, a three-word answer. Supporters, this is what we're supposed to do. Tulsi Gabbard is giving us our marching orders, okay? Now, we're not mind-numbed robots and zombies and so forth that just do what Tulsi Gabbard says to do, but I kind of think this is some pretty good advice if you're a Tulsi Gabbard supporter. So let's uh, roll this and listen to what Tulsi has to say. So but everyone who gets elected president faces attacks, uh, fair or unfair, but those who do get elected manage to talk their way through or around them. So how do you convince those voters who might be affected by something like this, uh, who, who gosh, they just say, gosh, you know, uh, I don't know what to think about Tulsi Gabbard now. Yeah, I'll just speak the truth. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love that. Speak the truth, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've got a list of things here that I want to read back that I've compiled, just kind of watching TV and jotting down some things um, that I really think are important uh, when you're differentiating Tulsi Gabbard from uh, Bernie Sanders, and quite honestly, some of the other candidates as well. But I'm getting a lot of pushback from Bernie folks these days about how just get on the Bernie train. You know, Tulsi's hanging on now and she's trying to drum up some interest. Um, well, Hillary Clinton was the one who actually uh, gave Tulsi Gabbard a huge boost. Tulsi Gabbard, Jill Stein, the Green Party, uh, all of whom are receiving a very large boost. Um, here are the things that uh, I like about Tulsi Gabbard that I can't say... Bernie Sanders is 100% on board with. Say it that way. And then I'll try to explain each one of these uh, using my humble opinion as sort of a, a guidepost, all right? So number one, free speech. Tulsi Gabbard is a free speech advocate. Uh, she's not at rallies telling people that Donald Trump's Twitter account uh, needs to be shut down. Uh, she believes in free speech in all its forms some of which are reprehensible to me and you, others uh, need to be said, and one of the reasons free speech should remain free is so we can hear new ideas, even things that we vehemently disagree with. Uh, if speech hurts your feelings, I would say, turn that speech off and don't listen to it. That's what I would say. Um, her ability to kind of navigate the whole Russian hoax thing makes me like her more because she wasn't on board with it. There was no proof of it. There's still no proof of it, so we've moved on to the Ukraine. Uh, and yeah, maybe there's some stuff there, but uh, is it impeachable? Don't know. Is it proper and good and decent? Probably not. But Tulsi Gabbard says, let's beat Donald Trump at the ballot box. Uh, another one here. Healthcare bill. All right, now... Um, Tulsi Gabbard gets a lot of flack because supposedly she's allowing for private health insurance, whereas uh, if you look at the countries that are doing quite well uh, with health care as far as a, a model, you look at Sweden, you look at Denmark, you look at France, Canada, all of these countries do allow for some form of private health insurance. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to get coverage that duplicates itself. It means the people who aren't able currently to get health care can get it. 
And it's the same concept as public versus private schools. I mean, we make public schools universal. Kids can go to public schools, but if the parents want to send them to a private school because they have the money and they're still paying taxes on the public school, then they're free to do that. You may think that that's a little weird. Why would you want to do that? Well, folks, it is America, and, you know, freedom of choice is a big thing. It, it just kind of is, and I, I know a lot of people don't ascribe to that. Uh, people just think you should just shut off all private insurance, shut it down. Um, I don't think that's ever going to happen. So I like her health care bill. I know others hate it. Um, Tulsi Gabbard is young. She's in good physical condition. She's ready to serve on day one. You've got several candidates in the Democratic field who are 70 years old or older. And all three of them are essentially front runners. Okay, so I'm looking at the future and I want my president to be sharp, focused. I want my president to... Um, bring a spirit of youthful optimism and good cheer to the White House. I don't want cranky all the time. I don't want doom and gloom. I don't want uh, in the middle of a sentence and then just randomly losing your place or mashing words together. I think we can do better than that, right? I think your president should have certain qualifications. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard is an army brat. Okay, sorry, I know a lot of people don't like her military service. They think she's a warmonger because she went to war or she uh, answered her country's call to serve after 9-11. Uh, she's since learned a lot about how the military works. See, when you, when you actually work in the organization, you learn a lot about it. Think of it that way. There are plenty of companies that I've worked for uh, in my life. I don't say plenty, but there are a few big companies I've worked for. And again, you, you learn how the sausage is made, and then you think to yourself, wow, <laughs> oh, these people. Um, and in the case of the military and the military industrial complex, you're working for them, so you know exactly what they're up to. And I think she brings a very unique perspective. Um, her abortion policy, it's sane. It's sane. Okay, there are a lot of people that want abortion on demand until the, the baby is almost ready to be born. And please don't hit me with, oh, that's very unusual, it's rare. We had a, a, a governor in Virginia say that we'll deliver the baby and when it's out, we'll keep it comfortable and then we'll talk to the mother about what she wants to do. That's infanticide, all right? Now, I'm all for a woman's right to do with her body what she chooses. Um, but when we get to a point where there is certainly another human being involved, and, and that's really hard to debate in the third trimester, and we want to be a compassionate society, right? We're always talking about compassion, the least of these. All right. Um, again, I wouldn't be out for outlawing abortion because I think you open up a prohibition where people are going to go do things to themselves in order to try to have an abortion. And uh, we don't want a country where women are doing that. All right. Tulsi Gabbard has the best foreign policy of any candidate running for president right now. Bar none. Um, Anti-regime change war. Uh, she's made it the cornerstone of everything. Bring the money home. Bring the soldiers home. It's a, it's a message that resonates with the left, the right, independents, pretty much anybody who's paying attention who's not a military contractor. All right? Religious freedom. You don't hear too much about religious freedom on the campaign trail, but Tulsi Gabbard has advocated for complete religious freedom. Now, if you're not religious, if you're an atheist, that's fine too. But please uh, allow some space for folks who have a faith in something. Let them have their delusion if you think it's a delusion. We're all allowed to have our little faith delusion. You just leave us alone. We'll do what we're doing as long as we don't hurt anybody or advocate for any kind of uh, destructive behavior. And uh, it, we keep... Uh, basically, it's a live and let live philosophy within the context of, of faith. You do your faith, I'll do mine. 
you'll do no faith and uh, everybody will be uh, fine. Okay. There's no, you know, um, on that issue, I just think it's, it's kind of in the founding of the country and it should be left alone. I don't think you should uh, tolerate people who are advocating for you. Okay. You can just say, no, thank you. You know, they're typically not going to come and wrestle you to their church. Okay. Uh, I like her optimism, her positive but firm demeanor, but I like the optimism, the smiling, you know, the laughing, the joking. Uh, we need a little bit of levity. We don't need complete, you know, tomfoolery or nonsense in the White House, but we do need somebody who um, has a sense of humor uh, and who has a bright sunny outlook on life and and again that would be Tulsi Gabbard um willing to call out all of the power brokers including Hillary Rodham Clinton this is one of the greatest things about Tulsi Gabbard is she's unafraid she's going right at the military industrial complex she's going right at the media and the deep state which are basically the same organization working in tandem to try to obfuscate reality so you're told there's a different reality than there actually is when you can kind of see it for yourself but you're still being told it's something else Tulsi Gabbard is truly the only pro-peace candidate running Bernie Sanders has some of those enzymes but when it comes to peace and advocating for peace you have to advocate for the abolition of all of these regime change uh, wars or lead-ups to uh, possible conflicts, whether they be in Iran or Venezuela or Libya or Syria. Her foreign policy, to me, makes the most sense and is far and away the best. Um, doesn't alienate independence. This is a big one for me because I consider myself an independent I'm currently registered as a Democrat, so I can vote in the Democratic primary here in the state of Florida. However, uh, I believe the majority of Americans are in the independent camp, or they're less affiliated with their own party than they used to be, or they're unhappy with what their party is doing. And by the way, they would like to have an opportunity to hear from more candidates from other political parties as well. Uh, I think the more the merrier, and... You know, when you marginalize an idea or a political party, um, you're really, I think, against free speech again and, uh, you know, free exchange of, of ideas, which I think is essential to a democracy. Uh, and the last thing I mentioned here was Standing Rock and her environmental policy. Tulsi Gabbard's environmentalism comes from her. She's cleaned up beaches. She believes in clean air, clean water. Uh, she's got a bill out there called the Off Fossil Fuels Act, which I think is even more serious than the Green New Deal. And everybody who reads it and understands it says, yeah, this is, and it's an actionable plan, which is more important than a non-binding resolution. So those are the reasons I think Tulsi Gabbard is a better candidate than Bernie Sanders and pretty much everybody else in the scene. I know this is kind of like Captain Obvious for uh, Tulsi supporters, but after uh, the tweet storm that happened on Friday, I wanted to kind of bring some new people up to speed on what Tulsi Gabbard is all about. So there you have it, folks. Before I go, I want to mention a candidate running for Senate in the state of Maine. Her name is Lisa Savage. She's running as a Green Independent Party candidate against Susan Collins. Um, she is anti-war, and she has a really good chance of doing uh, some damage to the political system up there in Maine. Maine is probably one of the most independent states uh, where their voters really seem to get uh, the ideas that are like on the forefront, like they, they're ahead of the curve these days. Uh, Susan Collins, I think her days are numbered. I think she's been in, in the Senate way too long, but, um, you gotta like the fact that there are candidates out there. Lisa Savage, 
please check her out. Uh, they have ranked choice voting up there too, which is going to make it even more interesting when those results um, finally, uh, those you know, they come down and those votes get cast. So in any event, I wanted to mention uh, Lisa Savage from the state of Maine. I will be doing this on and off, uh, mixing in with the main content. Folks, the bottom line is when this is all over, we still need a third way. We need a round about way to get to our goals, which uh, I don't think the Democrats or the Republicans are really uh, going to help us uh, in the long run. And we do need a third party and um, some people who can buy into that, you know. So in any event, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for donating over on Patreon and PayPal. Uh, I will be here all week. Don't forget to tip your bartenders and waitresses. And I will see you soon.